Hi, this is Minoli Daira. I'm a fashion designer, entrepreneur, model, and social activist. I'm going live from Sustainable Education Foundation to talk about my career, my journey, and answer whatever questions you guys might have. Um, hold on, let's see if we got this right. So let, I think let's hang around for a bit to and wait for some more people to come live. Should we do that? We're at four people now. Uh, just waiting for a few more people to come and then we shall start the conversation. So just waiting for a couple more. Uh, we're going to wait about another minute for a couple more people to join, and then we can start our discussion. I am live now, so come say hi, guys. It's the Sustainable Education Foundation. I am live. We will start in another minute or so. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna start now. Um, I'm Minoli Dairathna, and I'm an entrepreneur, model, fashion designer, and uh, social activist. I was invited here to talk about my career and why I chose to be an entrepreneur. And um, yeah, so I will be sharing a little bit about my journey and uh, answering any questions you guys might have. Um, let me just see if we have the go to start it. Hi, um, the question marks. Yes, we're just waiting for a couple more people to join. Sorry about the wait. Thank you so much for coming and joining the live video.
Okay, so I'm just gonna start talking and uh, whoever comes late can watch it later. So I had my uh, primary education at Musius College where I enjoyed my time in school. Um, sorry. Yeah, I pretty much uh, did a lot of extracurricular activities in school and uh, started doing some nonprofit work quite early on in my career or school career, uh, basically, um, which is what um, inspired mostly and uh, sorry Nippon, <laughs> we were waiting for more people to join. Um, what motivated my career mostly is um, the non-profit work that I did since I was in primary school. Uh, so my first non-profit work was with Rotary Club and then I moved on to having my own um, charity, you could call it that. Uh, I was about helping kids from all over the country in terms of uh, whatever resources they needed and helping them in areas that um, people, other people, other government had um, neglected. So this was the biggest thing in my life and the most, uh, I was the most passionate about my nonprofit work. So um, when I was in school and I had to pick a career, uh, I needed it to be something that revolved around me being able to do all this work that I've been doing. Uh, that kind of just like gave me life. So um, I, uh, if for A levels, uh, I chose to do biology and psychology because I felt like, um, well, firstly, I really love bio and psych, and then also because Sri Lanka needs a lot more psychologists because mental the mental health situation in Sri Lanka is not ideal. Um, so I studied these two because I loved it for the fun of it, not that I planned on going to medical school or anything of the sort. Uh, I just really, really like biology and uh, I wanted to study it. But in terms of a career, I wanted to create something that fit, fits my mold because I realized that um, I had interest in a lot of different fields, including science, psychology, art, um, a lot of um, sports, and uh, I needed a career that enables me to put all these passions together and kind of work on these things as I grow up and not have to choose one path where I have to give up the rest of my passions because all of that became a big part of me uh, from my school days, from my younger days, and uh, that's how Destiny came about. Uh, Destiny is a social enterprise, which is my company, and uh, Destiny is about working with communities, uh, raising funds, and doing basically everything that I've ever wanted to do with my life, I put into one company, which is destiny so it's a clothing brand where i get to express my art uh, my passion for design and experimenting with fashion uh, and i also get to speak out a very strong message through fashion because um fashion is a platform that lots of young people look up to so um, as a designer i chose to tell people stories through my designs. So whenever I create something, it's inspired by a personality or it's to help people embrace who they are and not to take away from who they are and make them fit into a different mold. So again, I'm still doing what I wanna do even though um, I've like gone into a field that is, um, I suppose, in a way, fashion kind of sorry I'm just piecing this together in my head so when we say fashion sometimes it's intimidating and um, fashion can be very intimidating and fashion can be about uh, making you feel like you're not cool enough to um, be fashionable or you don't feel confident enough because your style isn't what's in and you don't feel like um, you know, you don't feel like you fit in because what you like wearing isn't in trend. And insecurity is something that a lot of us uh, deal with. And that's the main reason that a lot of us don't have what it takes to succeed because we just cannot believe in ourselves because we 
everything around us keeps making us feel like we're just not good enough, we're not cool enough. Uh, so with Destiny, I wanted to flip this uh, perception of fashion that people have and turn it into something positive, something about empowerment, about embracing your identity, and, uh, you know, put all the positivity that I wanted my company to be into fashion and express it through the art form that it was meant to be. And uh, my journey as an entrepreneur started two years ago when I had the idea for Destiny. Uh, it was actually a dream from when I was about 13 years old. I wanted to have my own fashion brand and it was supposed to be called Dante, uh, which later had to be changed because someone already had the name. But um, so Destiny has been in the making for two long years and there's been a lot of behind the scenes. Um, it's not easy, to be honest. Uh, it wasn't easy. It was a lot of uh, learning. It was a lot of growing up. Uh, sorry, we have a question. <laughs> How have you structured Destiny to support the social enterprise side and the commercial side? That's a good question, Anish. <laughs> Um, let me just okay so we have structured destiny to support both the social enterprise side and the commercial side I hope you mean the business side of things by commercial side um, so the social enterprise side of it is about uh, helping communities like I said and uh, we work with these communities in a way where we give them jobs we teach them soft skills and then they can uh, turn that into a career that sustains their income basically so we take these women we train them we give them the skill sets we teach them how to continue doing things that will bring them a sustainable income and then we connect them to a platform where we help them sell their products for their uh, money's worth because lots of these people have so much potential and they're just being left behind by society because they just don't have the connections they don't have the exposure and they don't know how to get about so they have skills they have potential but they get left behind so what destiny does is we find these people and we give them the opportunity that nobody else gave them and we help them grow themselves into having a career that can sustain their lives and contribute to their communities and this we consider a form of empowerment and uh, the other side of the social enterprise is also about uh, using our profits in support of some of the causes we're passionate about, which is mental health, uh, helping children, children's education and health. Uh, and all this is supported by uh, a part of the profits that come through Destiny. Uh, the commercial side, um, I suppose that's where we structure the business and how we make it appealing to customers to grow the brand because regardless of how much... Uh, how much of uh, social work or whatever is in it, uh, we need to make profits to sustain a business. And uh, it took me a while to learn how to tackle the two sides and find the balance. Because as a creative person, a lot of us creatives um, don't really want to talk about the business side of things. We don't want to talk money. Uh, we don't want to focus on profits. So, um, <laughs> I will get to that question, Anish. Actually, yeah, let's talk about my... Uh, so Anish asked me what my biggest challenge has been balancing both sides of destiny. Uh, so like I was saying, as a creative person, um, a lot of other designers would agree with me that um, we love creating new things. Uh, it just gives us life to come up with new creations, to be able to inspire people, to speak our message. Um, and I will get to that question also. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so the uh, structuring the business side of things has been a challenge to me, to be honest. Uh, and it took me about a year to learn how to master this and actually understand it. And I'm still in the process of completely grasping the concept of having a full profit organization. Um, but 
uh, one of my biggest challenges was staying true to my purpose. When it came to finances or profit margins, uh, my investors or um, my marketing team would say, I mean, Oli, that's not going to work. That's really sweet of you, but that's not going to make you money. Uh, but then to stand my ground and stay focused on the goal I have, which is to create this social enterprise that creates the change I wanted to create, has been something I've had to fight for from day one. Because um, when you're dealing with the business world, nobody really cares much if you make pretty things or you change lives. It's all about numbers and profits and, you know. So it's been a struggle to convince them that I'm not just stuck in my little bubble uh, trying to save the world. I actually do have a business plan. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you have a solid plan and if you understand the gravity of an actual business, I guess you can find the balance in, sorry, I'm just reading the messages. I guess you eventually find that balance. There's no like right or wrong way. There's no set set of rules I could tell you about. I just found my way through my journey, which I think is really important. Uh, I think it's really important to just embrace the learning process of the journey because um, especially if you're building your own company, there's no set of rules that were um, pre-written for your kind of organization. If it's a unique kind of organization, then there's no, no one who's done it before you've done it. Uh, you have to figure out your own rules. You have to figure out what works, what doesn't work. Um, if your business plan works, if it doesn't, then you need to keep changing it. You need to be open to growth. You need to be embracing the growth you're in and not get discouraged by it. Uh, because there will be a lot of bumps along the way, which I've had with Destiny for the past year. And I still have bumps along the way as I grow. The bigger you grow, the more you have to face and figure out and solve. So um, yeah, it's just the, the learning curve and the growth process is so important. And that's the biggest lesson I carry with me from everything from day one to now. Embracing the learning curve is the best thing. Deciding to embrace the learning curve without getting discouraged is the best thing that happened to me. Um, how to study fashion design in Sri Lanka. I studied fashion design at AOD, um, but I cannot say I'm a graduate from AOD because I actually left uh, nine months before my graduation because my company uh, took off. I started my company while I was still in university. And uh, yeah, so my company became a priority and I decided to stick with the company and not um, and not have to let it go to focus on graduation, which I don't regret. I mean, by all means, stay in school, uh, do your degrees if you have to, if you feel like it. Having a qualification is a great thing. And I learned so much from my two and a half to three years in university. I learned so much from how to conduct yourself in the fashion industry, how it works, how to be on top of things, how to um, know what's trendy and what's not, and uh, pattern making, uh, fashion marketing. Every little thing I needed to know started from university. And then from there, I researched, I did my own learning. Um, and uh, grew to a place where I thought I was, uh, I have enough information and then I am willing to learn more uh, from where I stood. So I decided to take a leap of faith and leave university before graduation. Uh, but then again, it's um, your own journey. So do your own thing, figure out your own journey. I'm not saying university is good or bad. It's to each their own. Um, do what works for you. Do what works for you um, and yeah, figure out your own journey.
what would you tell younger designers to do in terms of making them become great designers? Huh. As a designer, the most important thing is your identity. Uh, your identity matters so much. To stay true to your art style, uh, how you conduct yourself, your personality, everything that you are carries into your designs. If you see a runway show off, just off the runway, if you see a glimpse, you're able to tell every good designer from each other. You can tell Coco Chanel from Prada. You can tell Alexander McQueen from Chanel. You know, so every great designer in history have their trademark, and that is so very important. And that's again a battle between uh, going with what's easier and more profitable, and uh, going with some a product that you actually believe in. And for me, that's personally been so, a struggle in Sri Lanka because you don't get many good, um, many good pattern makers or you know, like factories that are used to making stuff that's um, of such a high standard, like international designers. So it's been tough, to be honest, if you don't have your own pattern maker, if you don't have much knowledge in pattern making, it is tough. But my advice is not to give into it. Like if you want to perfect a pattern, then perfect it. People are going to come to you just for that. And it might take a long time to perfect something, but once you perfect it, it's yours. And you can sell it in a country where nobody else knows how to make that product. And you will have a trademark when you become good at something. Because everyone is selling cheap products. Everyone is selling something uh, that's easier to make, that's easier to sell. And if you create an identity for yourself, you will have a long-term customer base that you can work with and grow with and stay true to your designer identity, which honestly just keeps you inspired. So yeah, uh, what else can I wrote down a couple of things? Uh, yeah, so another thing uh, that's really driven my career is wanting to work in Sri Lanka and not leave the country. So it's been a struggle, especially in a field like fashion. You don't, uh, it's not that advanced. There's a very small circle, which is amazing. But then if you look at the rest of the country, if you go mass market, it's not a place where a couture designer or uh, a fashion designer can make a lot of money selling, uh, like, you know, designs that take a lot of work to be done, which is called couture and which is my passion. But then uh, as a nation, I feel like we need to work with what we have without leaving the rest of the country behind. And I personally believe in working towards bridging the gap between the rich in the country and then the middle class and the lower class citizens, because all of them build up this nation that we call our country. And if this country is to move forward, then I believe that we need to keep building from grassroots level with all of them, which is why it, the social, um, the social, sorry, <laughs> the social enterprise is so important to me because that helps me connect these communities, grow with these communities, and uh, you know work with them to a place where I can sustainably help them upraise their living standards. Uh, yeah, I think I've spoken about things roughly. Uh, let's read the questions. What is the biggest lesson that you have learned since you started your company? Does the Sri Lankan market have sufficient openings for fashion designing graduates? Uh, the Sri Lankan market, per se, uh, there are, okay, so if I am to speak of a mass-produced, uh, commercialized fashion industry where it's fast fashion, then yes, it's easier for designers to find jobs. But then if you're a couture designer or if you want to create your own label, then I found that it's not very easy for uh, young designers to kind of um, follow that because 
we have a lot of resources. There's two sides to the argument. We have a lot of resources where we have factories, we have the fabrics, we have uh, artisans who can like, you know, make the raw products for us like batik or crochets or, you know, we have everything that takes to make a great fashion brand, but then uh, creating the perfect product, like the final product, the execution part of it can be a little tough if you're a young designer trying to do your own thing. Uh, but I definitely do think that there is an opening, a new space open for designers because all these young uh, designers are starting their own brands and then it kind of creates the mentality where uh, it opens, sorry, it opens up a uh, space for new designers to come in with new ideas and still work in a couture uh, workspace. But in terms of mass production, I do believe that there are lots of stores that have opened up and they're looking for designers. And they're always looking for fresh new talent because uh, Sri Lanka is becoming quite trendy. So um, the youth is more demanding now. So there's definitely openings for fresh new designers with good talent uh, as long as you're not copy pasting or selling something that's already out there uh, and you have a good portfolio that speaks to people about you as a designer then you're definitely in a good place because there's a market for that out there sorry I hope that made sense <laughs> Yes, anyone can become a fashion designer. Um, what a fashion designer is someone who designs clothes. And if you have a passion for designing clothes, if you can create pieces that could sell, if you have the general knowledge to create, uh, figure out your way around patterns and designs and how that fits in, then you can definitely become a fashion designer. You don't need to be of a certain kind of breed or I mean, university education was important to me, but that all can be self-taught now. Um, I mean, half the things I know I learned off of YouTube tutorials, make sure you watch the right tutorials, but half of what I know, I honestly learned through tutorials. So if you have the drive for it and you have the passion for it, anyone can definitely become a fashion designer and you will find out if it works or not, if your collection or your portfolio sells. So, yeah, I mean, there's no harm in trying. If the industry isn't ready for your quality and design, what type of strategies would you do to bring both the consumer market and the fashion design market up to standard? By the fashion design market, I mean the development process. That is something I have been struggling with lately. Um, the industry is very much waiting for quality designers, but the places that can help you uh, with the execution of a product that's of the quality of a designer brand, um, it's very limited, especially for young designers who don't have their own factories. Uh, so the, my way around it is to work with existing factories, help them understand uh, quality products, uh, quality um, production of garments that I design. So I would work on patterns for months sometimes because there is such a lack for good pattern makers in the country and pattern making is crucial for good fashion design. So what I've been doing is trying to bridge that gap by again working with them from grassroots level and teaching them what I know, learning from them, exchanging our knowledge, and actually trying to teach these factories what the product I want. And hopefully that encourages them to learn more. And then that also could inspire other fashion students or uh, seamstresses to learn pattern making and then contribute their knowledge and uh, time towards creating quality products. because. I feel like someone needs to first start making quality products and then everyone else would get on the bandwagon. Um, you know, like right now, nobody really puts much effort into it because no one really, uh, except for the designer labels 
everywhere else i've i don't think uh you get proper patterns for garments you know it's ill-fitted in some way somewhere um unless you have like the perfect body shape of the model they fit it onto in the beginning so with if um, pattern makers don't pay attention to like curves and you know other important details then garments are going to be ill-fitted but in sri lanka this is such a common thing that i don't think it bothers anyone so as soon as more of us designers start making good quality clothes i am quite certain that we will have a market for that and then people will get more motivated to join that part of the movement and actually create quality products and not just fast fashion that looks cool but doesn't actually make people feel comfortable um Oh, you're most welcome, Mother Shani. Uh, you're most uh, you're welcome to uh, ask me any questions you have on my Instagram. You can follow my Instagram to follow my journey of entrepreneurship, which I post on every day. So, Mother Shani, if you have any questions, I probably would be able to cater to your exact questions uh, if you can hit me up on Instagram with further questions. And uh, how has your work evolved since you began your own label? Um, my work, my company has evolved and my work as a designer has also evolved in a way where I've learned how to cater to a market. Uh, when I first started, I didn't quite understand the importance of having a niche market or catering to a specific group of people because it was all about celebrating people and celebrating life. That is the slogan of destiny. So I was like, well, all girls matter, all women matter, so I wanna make clothes for all of them. This was me about three years ago. And then I realized when it came to making, making quality products that um, it's so much, it makes much more sense for me and my consumers if I perfect one type of uh, pattern and then keep like improving from there. So I perfect one kind of shape for one kind of clientele. Um, say we're working with teenagers who like a certain type of shape in a certain type of season. It's so much easier to satisfy your customers when you're catering to a niche market of customers because then you know exactly what they want. So in that way, it's easier for me to grow as a designer because I get to learn and kind of gradually increase my client base by learning about each uh, different body shape or what every other age group requires than just full on going, I want to create clothes for every age group and uh, not be able to satisfy any of them properly. Um, and also I think I've grown a lot more mature in um, Thank you. My Instagram page has been shared in the comments. Uh, you can ask me questions, guys. Uh, but yeah, I've definitely matured as a designer. And um, I think the maturity came from balance. Uh, creative people tend to have a lot of burnouts, which I speak about quite often. Um, what are the traits of a good fashion designer? The traits of a good fashion designer would be, again, to stay true to your identity um, and, sorry. Okay, we'll get to that question. Uh, what are the traits of a good fashion designer? I will speak about the traits of a good fashion designer and a good entrepreneur or a young person trying to achieve big things. I think balance is so very important and I speak about this all the time uh to myself and to people close to me because uh when we're so passionate about so many different things we want to do it fast we want to keep at it uh rest becomes irrelevant and uh everything else becomes irrelevant but then i don't see this as sustainable like i personally had a burnout um during the time that i launched my brand publicly last year uh, and then I hadn't taken care of my health. I hadn't taken care of a lot of other things in my life. And I just like, you know, kind of just snapped and 
needed to take a break from everything in order to become a stable human being. So I think the biggest thing I've learned in entrepreneurship or as a good creative person is to have balance because creative people uh, tend to have a one-track mind sometimes. And uh, my maturity, more than in my uh, creative process, my maturity as a designer has definitely been in finding balance in growing a business, being a creative individual, following my passions, and knowing when to take care of myself and balance a personal life that would sustain me in order to continue doing what I do. Because everything that I'm doing was inspired by everything I've seen, the people I meet, and the person I've become. So if I lose the person I've become because I'm so caught up in running around trying to accomplish all these things I've now set my mind to accomplish, if I lose myself in all of that, I lose my inspiration, then I just, you know, I run out of fool. So it's so important for me to go back to the things that inspired me. If it's working with little children, uh, staying on the, you know, going on vacation to the beach, or, you know, just doing little things like journaling or reading a book, something as simple as, you know, taking a 10 minute break a day to read a book can bring you like the break you need from just being caught in this big ball of like chaos that you think your life needs to be. So self-care and um, balance has been the biggest lesson I've learned as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. That's Instagram. Thank you, Anish. Uh, currently, Sri Lanka has one of the lowest employability rates. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry, I'm losing my voice a little. <clears throat> so, currently, Sri Lanka has one of the lowest employability rates. How do you navigate the issue? So, Destiny, a part of Destiny is focused on um, building communities that where we have we assign people to work with these communities and figure out what their talents are so that these talents can then be nurtured and these people can find sustainable jobs because i feel like um most of us focus on just growing this little community in colombo um you know and just we keep like we need to develop as a country, but I also feel like development is so stunted until you pay attention to the rest of our workforce that could possibly be contributing to as a country's growth. Uh, and this includes like 80% of the Sri Lankan population whose talents and um, potential is not harnessed properly. And I genuinely believe that bridging the gap between the communities and giving these people a platform uh, helping them identify their strengths, helping them nurture the strengths and talents they have, and giving them the opportunity, uh, the same opportunity that we had in, in order to grow and explore their talents, uh, would help the country grow so much more. And um, But speaking of employability, uh, I think he means it's kind of difficult to hire people in the country also. Uh, and this comes of from a massive lack of discipline. Like as a young person trying to hire people into my company, I realized that it's so, so very difficult to find good employees because um, I feel like we lack discipline. I'm not saying anything bad about the country, but um, we don't care much about consequences. We often say, Oh, it's Sri Lanka, it's okay to be late. Oh, it's Sri Lanka, it doesn't have to be perfect. And that honestly just bugs me so much because there's so many of us trying to take this reputation off of uh, the country's name and we're trying to do big things. But um, living under that, oh, it's just Sri Lanka mentality is um, stunting our growth and all our possible employees because they grow up in an environment where they say, oh, it's okay to be late, or it's okay not to, um, you know, be held accountable for the, the responsibilities that you have been given. And 
I feel like it comes with responsibility, feel, feeling a sense of responsibility towards your career, towards your job, towards your bosses, towards anything at all, really. Um, so my, how would I navigate this issue? I honestly speak about it whenever I can. If I ever speak to young people, I tell them uh, to be more responsible if ever you want to accomplish a dream, to be uh, to persevere really and not give up uh, if it doesn't work out the first time you try because uh, I've had I've had times where I hire young people who are really passionate to work and then uh, two days it's like really exciting because they're still getting used to it and then uh, a week later work gets tough and then they give up and then they're like oh like I don't feel like working today so can I stay at home or like I mean I did speak about self-care and how it's important to take care of yourself, but it's also really important to know that if you're given a responsibility, you need to show up, you need to do your part. And uh, I feel like that's something big that Sri Lanka has to work on um, in the young generation that's coming out, looking for jobs, guys, um, be responsible, like show up. If you, if you have a job, show up. Do your best, and then and then go take care of yourself too. But it's really important that um, we we have good work ethics. Sorry. Sorry. Tell us more of your journey with your social work. If it's discipline, what would you do to change that? Tough question. Uh, more of your journey with your social work. Um, my journey with social work started when I was about 12 years old. I worked with a lot of little kids because I loved doing that. I worked with um, orphanages, um, shelters, and uh, even probation homes where uh, young girls were sent to after, well, uh, I mean, I'm going to, I can speak about it. Uh, I shouldn't stigmatize it, but uh, basically young girls who've been through a lot and being disowned by their communities because they've been through either rape or, you know, like some issue in the community where the girl got disowned and uh, because they're ashamed to now accept these children into their community because these children have been a part of some scandal. So I worked very closely with a lot of these children uh, when I was quite young. I must have been about 15. And uh, I then went into mental health where we did projects on depression and suicide awareness uh, for about two and a half years. And um, I also am a part of a volunteer. Uh, I also volunteer to teach kids uh, once a week where we educate um, kids from less fortunate backgrounds to help them kind of reach their potential and stuff like that um, and yeah so basically just a lot of work with little kids because I absolutely love little kids um, great to see where you are now I accidentally happened to follow you in social media sometime back since my school days guts and growth have been truly impressive oh thank you Tisura um, I take no credit for that. <laughs> My journey has truly just been ups and downs. I cannot say that um, I am there yet or that I have accomplished everything I've set out to accomplish, but it is inspiring to me to hear that it inspires you guys. Uh, honestly, like when I get messages on Instagram saying um, I've inspired someone, I'm like, hearing that inspires me more because half the time i don't really know what i'm doing either you know i'm learning as i grow and uh, figuring it out day by day because like i said there's no rule book for growth as an entrepreneur it's you grow you learn you fall you cry a lot <laughs> sometimes sometimes you have meltdowns it's all a part of the process and the most important thing is that you get up and you learn and you try again the next day uh, so yeah what drove you to work in those fields how would you empower people to follow your initiatives as well 
What inspired me to work in these fields is because I felt they deserved so much more <laughs> than the community they were in or the government were giving them. If we're talking about my social work, uh, the reason I worked in mental health is because Sri Lanka has seriously stigmatized depression and suicide. And we are among the top five in the world for suicide rates. And I think one main question is because we don't speak about it. We have stigmatized it to a point where even if somebody is at a mild depression stage, we, um, we just make her feel so bad that that then turns into something that is so much bigger that has to now be tackled as, um, you know, something, sorry, something that's like seriously disrupting their lives because uh, people in Sri Lanka don't know that there's help out there. People in Sri Lanka, uh, not just Sri Lanka, in most of the Eastern cultures don't think that it's okay to speak about mental health. They don't think that it's a normal thing to have. Like if you have a mental health issue, then you're a crazy person is the mentality that I have grown up around. Uh, luckily, not in my own family or in my friend circles, but I do see it a lot. Like when I was back in school also, like if you went to the counselor, you had to do it secretly because if not people would like judge you and laugh at you and stuff but mental health is such an important thing and i feel like everyone who has the passion needs to speak up about it keep working at it to normalize getting help for mental health uh in the eastern cultures because our suicide rates are rising and i think as of now a certain number of people die every minute. I do not have the statistic with me right now, so I'm not gonna say it, but you can Google it. You can check how many people kill themselves every minute. And that drives me to work in this field, raise awareness, do whatever I can to help these people. Because when people die of cancer, people die of AIDS, we spend millions and millions of rupees, hours of our time looking for solutions or king for cures and here is a bunch of people who are killing themselves every day because they're sad or they can't live with themselves and all this can be sorted by you know getting them help or simply just you know doing something positive in the community to help these people and it's as simple as that like we don't need to spend years researching what the um what the solution is you know and it's it's like right in front of us these people need help and the help is so available out there and now there's online help available you know there's so much help out there and the reason i love working in mental health and speaking up about it is because i mean it saves life lives it literally saves lives to speak up about it so yeah, that's what drove me to work with mental health and uh, to work with little children. It's because they have so much potential and they're the future of this country. I'm going to grow up and these kids are going to be the youth of our country. And one day, if I look back and blame the youth of the country for causing riots, I don't want to be one of those people who just point fingers. I want to actively do something to make sure that the future of this country is secure and they do uh, get educated, they do get disciplined and they get the get, they get the education and the platform they deserve to grow into respectable individuals who can actually create something of their lives. And that is why I love working with children because there are such beautiful um, spirits who are ready to learn, uh, who are so talented and passionate and I'm not saying uh, older people, uh, you know, have lost hope, but I personally like working with children and which is, that is why I have chosen to work with children. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to empower parents? A huge issue in Sri Lanka is poor pampered parenting and not being able and not being open to new forms of education and jobs. That is very true. Um, pampered parenting. Okay, so 
to empower parents. I haven't ever thought about what advice I would give parents. Um, if I was to say anything to parents, I would say, if your kid is not wasting their lives and they're working at something they're passionate about, just let them be. Uh, it doesn't matter if they sometimes come home at four in the morning because they've been out working and not partying. If they're partying, then that's your issue to deal with. But uh, the big, one of the biggest problems I've had as a on, young entrepreneur uh, with the uh, with the adult generation of my time is that they honestly just look at you like, are you sure you're working? Like, why are you coming home at four in the morning? And like, you know, it's like adults tend to give you the side eye when they don't entirely understand what you're doing because it's like you're bringing in a whole new concept that's um, beyond their time and they find it really difficult to understand or wrap their head around this concept or our work hours or our work ethics. And I mean, I would tell parents to try and understand their kids, try and not be what stops your kid from reaching your potential. Because a lot of the time, especially in the Eastern cultures, uh, us as adults, well, I'm 23 now, so if I lived in the States, maybe I would have moved out, gotten my own apartment, and I would have so much more freedom to do whatever I wanted to do. I still do have a lot of freedom, though, because my parents are really sweet about stuff, but that's not the case for most other people out there. Um, like, I feel like kids could not kids, like young adults can reach their potential much better sometimes if we don't have our parents always breathing down our necks, um, you know, looking at every little thing we do and maybe once in a while complaining about how we're not attentive to family things or how we're being irresponsible about our time management and stuff like that. Um, I don't know what the best advice to give parents is because I've never really thought about it, but the best I can say is to allow your kids to reach their full potential, allow your kids to grow, allow them to experiment, don't um, be so focused on paper qualifications and grades that you stunt their growth and uh, destroy their confidence in becoming anything because I feel like the biggest reason for kids to fail is that um, they lose their sense of belief, they lose their sense of belief in knowing that they can do anything they set their minds to because there's school, there's grades, there's university, and then you get like all these um, quantifiable uh, results of that, that eventually end up defining who you are and how far you will go in life. And this is the biggest limitation that kids have because I mean, if I failed in school and someone told me, you know what, you're screwed and you're not sorry for the bad language. But if someone told me that I will not go far in life because I failed history, I would have actually believed it under different circumstances. And that would have been a loss of potential and a loss of a, of a um, how do I say this? it would have hindered my growth, it would have hindered my belief in believing that I can achieve whatever I set my mind to. So don't let paper qualifications and uh, grades hinder a child's potential or their belief in knowing that they can actually do whatever they set their mind to. Can we expect from destiny, what would the fully realized vision look like? The fully realized vision of destiny would look like the world would be a different place. Um, well, but yeah, I mean, in a nutshell, I want to change a lot of things in the country. Maybe it's wishful thinking right now, but I do have a lot of plans in working with education, with children, which, by the way, Anish Vijay Singha also works in. Shout out to Anish for all the good questions. He works a lot in education as well, which is how we became friends because of all the social passion, well, well because of the passion towards changing education and other things in the country and in the world. Uh, with Destiny, I hope to establish a sustainable system that helps uh, people from the less income and less fortunate communities 
uh, grow and find their potential, kind of like incubation camps for these people to come to and learn and uh, reach their potential and then go out and find jobs and actually improve their lives, you know, kind of take them out of that mentality and the livelihood of being poor and give them the opportunity because sometimes the only gap there is that they don't realize that they have the opportunity and the potential you make them realize they have those two and they actually do so much better in life which i have seen with my own eyes so uh one part of destiny would be to create like kind of like incubation camps for these people to come to learn and exchange ideas grow together uh, where it will be a free environment of just following your passions and growing and learning and uh, reaching their potential which starts with the projects I'm doing with the little kids and um, another part of destiny is to speak up about mental health uh, do you know like even with our clothes it's about um, connecting with who you are inside, with your emotions, with where you've been, your journey. And uh, I, I like to say that I, I would love my clothes to be a mediator between you and you embracing the path that you have traveled. All the things that have happened in your past, the life that you have lived. If you think that is ugly, then I want to create I want to reflect that in my garments and create beautiful garments out of it and give it to you so that you can wear your story, you can wear and express who you are and feel beautiful in it. And I genuinely believe that it makes the biggest impact in someone's life to change perspective on their journey or their story because perspective is everything. Like even if I've had rough pressures in my life, in perspective, all of those were experiences that helped me grow into this person I am today, uh, standing here in this part of my journey, which I love and embrace. And um, yeah, and my the reason I create clothes is because it's my art. And I want my art to do for people what it did for me, which is to embrace who I am, to help me express myself, to give me confidence and embrace my body and my journey. Um, a lot about the fashion brand, ironically, has to do about the inner person and uh, speaking about the story of the person you are inside and not just about your image. So the full-blown vision of Destiny would look like starting an entirely new movement in the fashion industry where it's about self-expression, individuality, um, self-love, and positivity instead of fitting in and just looking cool and looking nice uh, on the outside. It'll, the fashion movement I want to start is about art and what it was back in the good old days when Coco Chanel decided to wear pants because she wanted to rebel against wearing dresses, if any of you know about Coco Chanel. Um, so yeah, the full-blown destiny would hopefully have changed a lot of lives in terms of our social projects and changed uh, people's outlook on what fashion is meant to be. That's a lot of questions. If you were to magically develop one part of Sri Lanka to get a great standpoint, what would you choose to develop first? My final question would be, what can we do to build our mentality to become as disciplined and powerful as yours? What are your techniques? <laughs> um, if I was to magically develop a part of Sri Lanka to create a great standpoint, what would you choose to develop first? If I was to magically develop apart without having to go through all the logic and the hard work i would say that i'd develop the education system i would develop the education system to actually focusing on true values of what it takes to have a successful life about uh, rate awareness about what needs to be taught to children education right now what it is is very important but it seriously takes away the sense of individuality uh the sense of hope 
and you know the inspiration we have as kids kind of completely disappears when we go into the education system and then we come out of it having to choose careers but now we can no longer choose a career because we don't even remember what we like because we spent like you know the past 17 years of our lives um being brainwashed that getting an a in math english and science is the only thing that's important in my life so i no longer had the chance to not me i'm just saying <laughs> I was rebellious. I anyway did what I wanted to. I didn't care much for getting A's. I did get a couple of A's though, but it didn't really matter to me because I never really cared. Um, but stay in school, study, get A's, it's good. Um, but the point is that I think school should focus more on how to have a balanced life, how to follow your passions. I think school in Sri Lanka should have more opportunities and more avenues for people so they can follow like um, whatever they're passionate about and it doesn't just have to be academic subjects um, and that's where everything starts because every child goes through school from the poorest to the richest in the country every child goes through the education system unless you're homeschooled of course but I still believe that you follow the same system uh, if we can add good values and ethics and create a system where kids are free to grow into their fullest potential in our education system, it would truly just change the entire nation, I believe. So I would magically change our education system if I could to answer that question. And the last question is, seriously, do does anyone else have questions? <laughs> Um, you guys can ask. I'll be live for about another five or so, well, maybe like about two more minutes. So if anyone has a question, now's your chance. Or you can find me on Instagram and talk to me there where I would, this is actually the first ever Facebook Live or Instagram Live that I have done. So I am sorry if I'm a little bit all over the place. I'm not very used to this. So maybe if you guys have questions, I think I would better answer them uh, in a one-on-one -on -one conversation on Instagram, which is Minoli underscore Dante, if you want to, if you have any more questions. Um, to answer the final question, uh, what can we do to build our mentality to become as disciplined and as powerful as yours? My mentality isn't, I don't believe that it is, uh the ideal mentality and i don't believe that i have fully reached the potential of being disciplined or powerful but i can tell you what has helped me in my journey um it's to have faith persevere have faith in yourself have faith in whatever you choose to have faith in but have faith faith keeps you going on your darkest days um it might sound cliche but it's true um, because when you have a bad day and everything just goes south, um, you need something to hold on to. And that's faith, which helps you persevere. And perseverance is the key to actually accomplishing what you do. Because we have big dreams, and that is amazing. Uh, taking that first step is also very important. But the most important thing is sticking through that growth sticking to the path you chose to come onto and actually embracing the growth without letting it break you apart. And that's where you need to persevere and hold on to that faith. So the things that have kept me going is my final vision, which is to change all these lives that I'm passionate about changing, changing, bringing, adding a new outlook on my part to the fashion industry, which is about body positivity, which is already out there. Mine's more about embracing who you are, embracing yourself, your journey, your story, and about who people are inside. I want to bring that into the fashion industry. And that's something I'm really passionate about. So that keeps me going. I'm like, OK, I mean, I did have a bad day, but this story isn't about me. It's about all these people I want to help. So I'm just going to keep going. And then it's also faith. I have faith in God personally and in good deeds and positivity and whatever you choose to have faith in I believe that that is what will sustain you 
at the end because it's not the numbers, it's not all the trophies, it's not the titles, it's not the fame. Nothing will keep you going on a bad day as much as faith, perseverance, and positivity would. So um, my techniques are to keep feeding my soul, keep doing the things that feed my soul, the things that inspire me, the things I'm passionate about, um, and that's what keeps me going. So my coping techniques, I guess, to detox uh, what happens to me in a business mindset is to go back to where I started, go back to what inspires me, go back to all the little things that, you know, made this bubble up in the first place. To remember where I started, why I started, and why I want to keep doing it. So, yeah, I think that's all the questions. Thank you for all the questions, and thanks to everyone who came to watch. I see a lot of familiar names from school. <laughs> I bet you guys are wondering how I got here, because I was never in class, and yet I'm here running my own company. How did Minoli become this responsible? I couldn't answer that for you but yeah thanks guys for coming it's nice to see some familiar names thank you Anish for all the questions um, you guys should check him out too uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah if there's anything else hit me up on Instagram I hope I wasn't too all over the place do forgive me if I was this is my very first Facebook live like I said and I wasn't prepared for this at all all so i'm sorry if it was a little all over the place but yeah i'm gonna end this now so thanks guys and thank you sustainable education foundation for having me i think it's really great what you guys are doing uh giving little snippets of these live sessions to uh your audience so they can watch and get inspired and not have to you know come not have to wait till they meet us personally one day or like um, you know, just like giving it to them easily. If there's anyone out there who wanted this information, I'm thankful to Sustainable Education Foundation for helping me connect with you. So thanks, guys. And I will see you all. Um, I don't know if there's going to be next time. I don't think so. But yeah, you guys can uh, reach out to my Instagram. And I'm going to end this live video here. Hey. I am learning how to end this. All right. Bye, guys. I figured out how to end it. So. <laughs>